Do you feel like life is passing you by? Or do you feel like you should be happier or be more successful, but you just don't know what it is, but you have this lingering sense of wanting more, but not being happy with where you are? Well, you're not alone. So many people feel that way. So in this video, I'm gonna break down why you may be feeling that way and what you can do to move through that. You ready? Let's go. Welcome back to the Grind and Gratitude Show. Thank you so much for being here. Look, I'm just gonna get right into it. Do you have this lingering feeling like maybe there's more in life for you? Maybe there's more purpose. Maybe there's more love. Maybe there's more self-awareness. Do you feel that way? And maybe you're struggling to kind of make it happen. So let's talk a little bit about that because I know there have been times in my life where I felt unworthy. There have been times where I felt like I should be grateful for what I have, but I just wasn't. And there's times that I felt like maybe I was a failure. And maybe you can relate to this. You know, I've coached hundreds of people and, you know, so many people have felt the same way. But what is it that's getting in the way of us having more happiness and more joy and more success and more peace and more calm? You know, I know when I was working in my corporate job, I had a really good job. I was training and teaching people and coaching people and I really liked what I did. And there have been times when, you know, some of the organizations I worked for weren't that great and others were. But I always had this sense of like, why aren't I happier? Why aren't I doing more? Why aren't I able to really find meaning and purpose? And maybe you're feeling that way as well. What I learned was many, many years ago, when sometimes people think that they're broken and they need to be fixed, I learned that we're all naturally four things. And I want to break down what these four things are and how you can use these things to move forward in your life and find more peace, joy, and calm. First thing that you have to know is this. You are naturally curious. Like you have this natural curiosity. And I think a lot of us don't know that and we don't realize that we're naturally curious because some of us just stay in our little routines. We, we're on auto program and autopilot with the way that our days run. You wake up, you do the same things over and over again. You, you get ready, you go to work or maybe get your kids ready to go to school. You do all the things that you have to do. You come home, you cook, you clean, you do all those things. And then you repeat that cycle over and over again. And so what you don't realize is that you are naturally curious. You were born curious. See, think about it. When you first come into this world, you're looking around and you're trying to understand where you are and what's going on and who's this person and who's that person. So you have this natural curiosity, right? And, and you're trying to figure things out. And so that continues to your childhood. You know, remember back when you were a kid and you were always asking why, why this, why that? You wanted to know this. You wanted to know that. You wanted to explore. You wanted to try different things. You have this natural sense of curiosity. So where did it go? Well, life starts to beat you up and you start to forget that you're naturally curious. And what curiosity is really about is learning and growing. And if we're not learning and growing, then we're dead inside. Life is all about learning and growing. Like, you know, Tony Robbins often says this. He says, happiness equals growth. You're the most happiest when you're growing, when you are learning. And so when you have curiosity and you go out into the world and you explore and you read books and you watch YouTube videos and you travel and you have engaging conversations and you really test out your curiosity, that's when you start to expand who you are. So think about all of the things, all of the phases in your life, your childhood, you were playful, you were trying to explore, your, your teenage years, you were learning a little bit, you were building relationships. Maybe after you know high school, you either went to university or college or you found a job. And then at all of those levels, that curiosity is still there, but then we start to kind of fit in this box that society puts us in. Go to your job, start your family, and all of those things are great, but I think a lot of us you lose that curiosity along the way. We, we tend not to learn and grow as much as we did when we were younger. And that's what we're yearning for. 
So sometimes, you know, maybe life is good. Maybe you have a great family. Maybe you have a great relationship, a really good job. You, you, you have a house or you live in a nice neighborhood and you just have this lingering feeling like, why aren't I happier? Well, maybe it's because you're not playing to your curiosity. Get out into the world and learn, have new conversations, try out different things that you've never tried before. Put yourself in different environments and then you'll start to expand that curiosity. You'll want to learn more. You'll want to grow more. You'll want to experience new things. So that might be one of the reasons that you just don't feel like life is going your way. Be curious and not just be curious, act on your curiosity. Make it a point to do something different outside of your comfort zone, something you've been curious about, something you've always wanted to do. Explore that thing and see what it does for you internally. See how much joy it brings you, how much peace, how much calm. See how it expands your mindset. So you got to act on your curiosity. The second thing is this. You're naturally creative. See, think about it. Again, everything goes back to your childhood. You were creative. There were times when you could probably just play by yourself for hours. I have to figure out a way to communicate what I need when I can't really talk. You were drawing. You were an artist when you were younger. You liked music. Or maybe you did all of these things when you were young. So you're naturally creative. And you don't need to have a creative job to release that creativity. right? You can do things outside of your job. You can do things outside of your business. But you have to be creative. So tap into that creativity. How do you tap into your creativity? Well, what are the things that you enjoy doing? What are the things that bring you more joy and happiness? Why aren't you doing those things more? Maybe it's listening to music. Maybe it's art. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's teaching other people things. You have to learn to play to your creativity. And look, some of you might be saying, look, my job's not very creative. I go to work. I have an office job. I do what I'm told. And that's it. And that is part of the problem. That's part of the bad programming. You know, see, school and work really take that creativity away from us. They tell us how we should be, how we should act, what we should do. And as a result, many of us just conform and we get away from being creative. But you are naturally creative. So find ways to play to your creativity whether it's in your job or your business, in your relationships, in your personal life, tap into your creativity. What are some of the things that you can do? You know, for me, I never really considered myself to be that creative. I played a lot of sports when I was younger. I, I used to DJ. And even then, now that I think about it, DJing was creativity. I used to have to mix music together, make it sound good, keep it entertaining. I'd speak on the mic to get people hyped, you know. By the way, my DJ name was DJ Stone Cold. (laughs) But I never really looked at that as creativity. I just looked at it as, yeah, it's something I like to do. And looking back years later, I realized that, you know, I still love music. I still love to mix music. I still love listening to music and really listening to the beats and figuring out what songs blend together. But as I got older and I was in my corporate world, I kind of just let that go. I would go to my, my corporate job, sit at my desk, do my job, and it wasn't very creative. And I always felt like there's got to be more to life. Like, why am I just doing this? What, what can I do to kind of help and serve other people? But in the back of my mind, I wanted to create. I wanted to do something that was going to expand me and help other people. And what I realized is, There's ways to be creative in your business. There's ways to be creative in your job, in your schooling. There's ways to be creative outside of that in your personal life. But we just have to look at the things that we enjoy doing and continue to expand them. So, you know, I still like mixing music. I still like playing basketball. I still like writing. I still like motivating people. These are all ways that I get my creativity out there. And it really brings me joy and it brings me alive. Like what brings you alive? What can you create or what do you create that brings you alive, that sets you on fire, that you just would do for hours and hours and hours without even knowing how much time has passed? 
That's creativity. And that's within you. But you don't know that because you're looking at everybody else and you're saying, oh, this person on social media has that. That person has that. I feel so far behind. I should be happy that I'm living an okay life, but I'm not. What is missing? Well, maybe it's the creativity. Maybe you're not creating anything. That's why you might not feel this fire inside. So what do you want to create? What, is the, what are the things that you can create? Right? It doesn't always have to be artistic. Maybe you're great at like creating solutions to people's problems. Maybe you're good at helping people to see things in them that they don't see within themselves. Maybe you're good at teaching people things. What can you do to unleash your creativity? Because you are naturally creative. And I promise you, if you start to play to your creativity, you're going to start to get this passion and this fire within you to figure out how you can do more of it. So tap into your creativity. And if you don't know, sit down and think about it. Think about all the things you used to love to do when you were younger. Think about the things that people tell you that you do well and write all of these things down. At the top of the page, write down, what do I love to do? And you just Set a timer for two minutes and you write everything that you can think of. Well, I love to do this. I love to do that. I love to do that. I love to write. I love swimming. I love the beach. I love travel. I love cooking. All of the things that you love to do. And then what you do is you go back through that list and you start doing those things. You start being creative. You know, one of the things that you have to understand too is that when you're stuck in life or when you feel like you should be further ahead or when you're going through a major challenge in your life and you just can't seem to figure it out, What you have to understand is that you are naturally resourceful. You're naturally resourceful. See, you have the ability to figure things out and you don't even know that. It's innately within you. There was a time when you didn't know how to do something and you figured it out. There was a time when you struggled in your life, when you had to overcome a challenge, when you were trying to figure out how to achieve a goal or a dream and you had to tap into your resourcefulness. You have it within you, but when you're stuck or when you're stagnant in your life, you don't understand that. And so you have to go into yourself. You have to ask yourself deep questions to help you figure out how to move through a challenging situation. But if you're struggling in some area of your life right now, if you want more joy, more success, and you keep hitting these roadblocks, We have to learn from the mistakes. We have to learn from the setbacks. We have to learn from other people. So much information is available to us, but if we're not resourceful enough to ask the right questions, to search for it, to reach out to people, to buy these books, then it's useless. We're never going to get the answers that we need. So for you, if you're going through something right now, if you're stuck, if you're stagnant, I want you to sit down and I want you to write out the challenge or the problem that you're having. Be very clear. Right now, I am struggling with my health. I have these health issues. I am overweight. And my goal is to do what? What is your goal? To lose weight, to get healthy, to come off your medications. What is the challenge and what's the goal? Then you want to sit down and write out everything that you can do to help you to move through this challenging situation. And again, don't overthink it. Just write it all down. Well, I can start exercising, eating better, drinking more water, walking a little bit more, you know, connecting with other family members or friends who are healthier, asking them to hold me accountable. What are all the things that you could do to help you to take control of your health? your finances, your relationships, your career, your business. See, when you sit down and you actually think about these things in a logical way and you write them down, here's the problem, this is what I want as the solution or the goal, and this is what I can do. And then you start to look at that list that you created and you start to figure out the things that you can do right now because you have this natural resourcefulness within you. And I promise you, once you make that list and you start crossing off those, that list of the things that you can do right now and you take action, you'll start to understand that, yeah, I am the solution to my problem. 
or I can find someone to help me with that solution to my problem. So tap into your resourcefulness. And the last thing I want to say to you, and, and I really needed somebody to tell me this at points in my life, is that you are not broken. You don't need to be fixed. There's nothing wrong with you. And I needed people to tell me that because there's times in my life where I just struggled in so many areas of my life, my finances, my career, my business, my health, my relationships, so many different areas of my life where I just felt like they were out of my control. I felt like I wasn't doing enough. I didn't feel like I was worthy of the things that I had. And so I was very difficult on myself. I had a lot of limiting beliefs and I just felt like I, I felt broken. And it was through coaching and mentors and personal development and books and seminars that I realized that I wasn't broken. I realized that there was nothing wrong with me. I just had to get clear about what I wanted, get focused on the right things, forgive myself for past mistakes and failures and setbacks, and then get disciplined so I'm working on the right things. And I always have to constantly remind myself of that because, you know, sometimes we're our worst critic, we're our harshest enemy, and we have to learn to be gentler and kinder with ourselves. And that includes reminding yourself that you're not broken. You don't have to be fixed. Yes, there's, there may be areas of your life that you want to move forward or you want more happiness or joy or success or that you might be having some challenges or struggles, but it doesn't mean that you're broken. You have to constantly remind yourself that you are worthy. Remind yourself with gratitude that you're thankful for what you have. Remind yourself of the challenges that you've overcome. Remind yourself of the things that you've accomplished that you never thought you could because you are worthy and you have so much more potential. And when you see yourself as not being worthy, that's when you're, you have this critical language, these limiting beliefs, this negative self-talk. And it takes you down this downward spiral of, I don't deserve to be here. I'm not worthy. And so these are the four things that kind of had held me back and really kept me in place living a mediocre life. I, I didn't know what it was. I just felt like I was uneasy. I felt like I wanted more out of life, but I didn't know how. And these were the four reasons why. And maybe you can relate. So I would love for you to leave a comment and tell me what, what resonated with you the most. So make sure to subscribe. And if you really, really love this video, then you might just love this one right here.